Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So in this video I want to continue working on the little glass house. Everything got stitched and we discussed that we need to finish this path visually. It's sort of going into no man's land here. We sort of need it to just disappear over a hill for example and then that will give the little greenhouse or glass house some space to be in stitch some of these little pots. I don't know how well that's going to go being that this is an itty bitty little area, but we'll give it a go. And um, maybe a few little stones in around the place. So that's the plan. So yeah, I think that will be, oh, there's the bit of path I've been looking for. It was in the box of um, threads. It was just sitting in here. I've been looking for that for like two weeks. It was just sitting there. Oh, that's great. Okay. I wonder, should we continue the path down here? Yeah. I think so. Sort of makes sense. That little leaf is not connected. The path does look big to the house, but I think we've all given up on perspective. It's just one of those projects where that just doesn't matter. Or do we save that little bit of path? I've grabbed this out too, the piece that we've been using throughout the whole project. And I thought maybe that up there might help finish the path that's coming from behind the house. Sort of the right shape. There's this tool attached to, so I might hang on to that little piece of tool because we might be able to pop it down here. Yeah, that's that'll work. That disguises the path. Do I do it that way? No, we lose the path. It's going to go that way. We can come over the house a little bit. It'll sort of be maybe a tree growing to the side here that's leaning in to the foreground and that's behind it and the path's even further back. So look, I can justify it. It's all good. Now I'm just wondering... I'm going to find a thread for these little pot plants. Where's my needle? Oops, now I dropped the needle. Right, there it is. So I've got three threads here, maybe too many. That DMC cotton, as um, most of you know, is six threads, but for you newbies out there, you can break it down to get finer work. So this is only three threads. I'm getting a lot of messages from new folks that are joining the party. So if you're out looking for supplies, don't um, cross out DMC stranded cottons. They, um, they are a really good resource of colors. So you can certainly invest in more expensive um, cottons and threads and wools and things. But I think if you're starting out, just aim to get yourself a nice little selection of um, stranded cottons and go your colours that you you really like, the, the ones that you, are your favourites because you'll tend to find that your first few projects are very much dancing around the colours that you really like and that's a good starting point. You don't need to go out and grab colours that are a little bit random to you. Not yet. That'll come. And they last forever, unless you're doing massive, big projects like cross-stitch pieces. They last forever because you often cut a piece off and then break it down into, you know, three strands or two strands, sometimes even... Um, one strand if you're doing work around a face or some eyes to get that tiny little stitch. So this little one, 642, but it's 
it's old so that number may be replaced now I'm noticing quite a lot of new numbers coming into the DMC stranded cotton range I don't have a lot of anchor threads they're just not readily available to me where I live I'm sure they're out there but the, the places I frequent just don't have that range And once you sort of get yourself a little palette of colours, you'll find that more will come to you, whether it's thrifting. And you pick up some little unfinished cross-stitch kits and you'll find that in amongst it will be a card full of threads that whoever had that original pattern didn't, didn't actually do the project. Well, those threads are, are great. Just adjusting my pots here a little bit to what I originally drew. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can sort of see. The first one I've got a stitch either side to give it high sides. This one I'm making more of a, a little trough. Might give me a little bit more space to pop a few little flowers in, but boy goodness, those flowers are going to have to be tiny stitches. Like barely there. It's all well and good doing these little designs, but you don't have to do a lot of work to them when they're tiny. Okay. Now I might come down and do I don't really want to muck around too much with colour because this is a very neutral piece. So I can't just whip over to say terracotta pots or as it is, doing the flowers is going to be quite a challenge, being that I don't have a lot of colour. So just thinking, maybe I should bring some little beads in. Yeah, I might have to because I'm just, here I am stitching heaps of pots. If I don't have any colour range to put things in. But we'll come up with something. What the hang, we'll just stitch them. And then we'll worry about it when it's done. It's too late, isn't it? Lots of pots start thinking of variations for the pots. So I could use some bits of lace, tiny little morsels of things. It doesn't really matter. It's just to give the illusion that on the shelves in the greenhouse at a distance is some little pots of something. It's not like I'm trying to, you know, stitch an actual flower. It's... It's the illusion of a flower. Which gives you a lot of creative wriggle room, might I just add. So that's those pots done. I'll finish that off and come up over this side. So as you know from my last video, I went Saturday night with my mate, Mary Ann, to the Ed Sheeran concert. Well, what can I say? He was amazing. Amazing. It was just, uh, for a start, I was not a fan of the venue. I think I mentioned that in the last one, that we had seats fairly low down. Therefore, our exit was out via a tunnel underground that brought you up to ground level. And with um, the mass of people leaving the arena, it felt so claustrophobic and, oh, it was just, and I declared, and then it stopped. Like we couldn't get out of the tunnel because there were so many people coming around the stadium that as the tunnel sort of come up, we hit this wall of people. So it became just a little shuffle. And when you're stuck in the tunnel and it was so hot, anyway, that was a concert from probably 10 years ago. So I was a little disappointed to hear it was at this stadium because I assumed when I booked the tickets it was at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre because they all seemed to go there, but it wasn't. But anyway, we got there. We decided to use public transport. So we went to the, for the Brisbane girls, eight mile planes um, bus terminal. And from there, they were running free shuttle buses into the stadium so I think we got there at five o'clock uh, Mary Ann's husband dropped us there there was quite a queue of people but the buses just kept coming and look 
I said to Mary Ann, I have not been on a bus for 32 years, public transport, you know, sort of once you sort of get your car and, you know, independence, you're sort of off and running, but um, I've probably been on occasional one where they shuttle you between events, but as for a Brisbane City Council bus, oh, long, long, long time. So, and it was so hot, it was steamy and muggy and I said to her, for goodness sakes, are they air-conditioned these days? And she giggled and said, yep, thank goodness. So we didn't queue long, probably about 15 minutes. We sort of stand for a minute or two, shuffle along, shuffle, shuffle, stand for a minute. You know, it moved the queue. So on we got, and I got to ride on the new bus tunnels that the city has built a few years back. So that was pretty cool to see the usual road that I travel on with a car from a different point of view, sitting on a bus. So that was a bit of fun. Mary Ann just sort of sat there going, you, you're nuts, girl, because she often uses it to get to her work to pick up a company car to go for the day. So she's pretty familiar with that particular track. So anyway, we got to the stadium and, oh, it was bedlam. You can imagine it. But um, we found our seat reasonably. Well, no, we didn't actually. That's a whole other story. But we got, got to the stadium and we found that we had to walk all around, all the way around to the other side. Hang on, I'm just splitting, splitting a thread here to get three. So we went around till we found the gate that we needed and in we went. Then we sort of stood there like a pair of gooses trying to make sense of the numbers and the and the um, arrows and the doorways and the people. and But we figured it out. We had to go up a level. We weren't on the very top, but we were a second from the top. So we had to go up some stairs. Then we walked a little bit around the arena again and finally found our doorway. We walked in and holy Moses, did I look down upon a huge space. And I was like, oh gosh, look at, look at the distance. We're up in the air. But anyway, we fo I focused on the numbers, but that didn't help because we could not find our seat. So we came back out thinking that we needed a different doorway in. Went back in. No, still no luck. Now I've knotted that. Leave it, Corinne. Go back to that second piece. See, there's blooming seats at those stadiums. This didn't make sense, so we went in another doorway, which was sort of taking us further away. So we were right originally, but we bumped into a gentleman who was ushering people through, you know, idiots like Marianne and I. And he said, no, girls, you've got to go back over here. So we did. And um, still no go. Couldn't find it. And we bumped into an older gentleman who was ushering people you know, idiots like Marianne and I. And um, he goes, no, no, girls, you've got to go back over here, which was the original door. So we were right. We just couldn't find the seat. We were seat one and two, and there was thousands of them. <clears throat> and we were sort of probably two little doorways away from the space we needed to be. And he says, look, come with me. So he walked us to the seat and... Uh, delivered us safely. So he was such a nice man. So we found our seat and we had our backs to the concrete wall that is the stadium. So we were in the very back row, second from the roof, bird's eye view. We were a fair way from the stage, but we saw everything. And he had these huge TVs hanging from columns above the stage and they were in the shape of a guitar pick. So they had that curved bottom up, you know, like a, a guitar pick. And in that was a screen. So we could see him in many ways, not only on the stage. We could also see him in these big hanging guitar picks. And we could see him um, above his head was a big circular TV. I'm talking it's probably three, four, maybe even five buses in diameter, circumference, in circumference. If you were to get four or five buses and park them in a circle and then suspend them in the air 
above a stage, a similar size, with Ed Sheeran in below it. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Visually, it was just amazing. You can barely see that stitched colour on that background, but I'm going to continue because it is there. Just trying to get a different shape pot to that other one. Dropping down to the next pot. So we had two bands prior to him and they were young folk, uh, young lad. So he was really good. And then a girl, um, Macy Peters, she's from the UK. She's um, about in her early 30s. She has been signed to Ed Sheeran's record label. So she was really good. She was really nervous too. Her first song, she jiggered it up. She sort of stopped at one point, let the music go and then picked it up again. And she just grinned from ear to ear. But yeah, she she was nervous. <clears throat> I would be too. I'd be shaking in my boots. I don't know how they do it. And then uh, about eight o'clock, because we got there seated at six. Oh, we before the, while the young fella was playing, we are like, right, we're confident we know where we are. We'll, um, we'll go and find a snack. And, of course, it was just people everywhere. And we found this little an, an espresso coffee thing. And they had some toasted sandwiches, muffins, biscuits, and a coffee. And no one was there. So I said to Marianne, look, let's just not tempt fate and disappear into the, the internals of this place. Let's just get a toasted sandwich. So that, that's what we did. And right near our door, when we come back out to this big wraparound corridor where all the vendors for food were, someone had upended a box of chips, hot chips. So there were chips everywhere all over the floor. And I said to Mary Ann, there's our landmark. We've left some crumbs for ourselves so we can find the door that is to our seats. And the little vendor was probably about six metres up from there. So um, we're getting our sandwich toasted, getting some drinks, and the cleaner comes along and sweeps up the crumbs. So we were cacking ourselves laughing, going, oh, well, there goes our breadcrumbs. Hansel and Gretel are not going to make it back. <clears throat> but we did. We got our sandwich back up. And because we were on seat one and two right on the aisle, you know what happened all night. Anyone who wanted to go to the toilet and get a drink, we had to hop up stand to one side, let them out, and then let them back in. But it was all right. The seats were so small and our backs were cramping because we just couldn't really move too much. So it gave us a chance to stretch. And occasionally when we hopped up, we just stood there and just jigged around a bit. Oh, we had a ball because at um, 15 minutes past eight, Ed came on. And oh, boy, oh, boy. That boy... He was amazing. He explained to the crowd that he makes the music um, as we go. He said, I don't play tracks. I don't just lip sync to a track. You will hear the song as I create it right now, right here. And he said, this device is a, I still can't remember the name of it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to lay down some beats and he'd like, um, he'd tap like he might make a, here we go, now we're off on a tangent, he might go, make that sound. Can you hear that tapping sound? And then he'd record that. Then that sound would uh, be in the background. Then he might make another sound that might be, then he might do another sound that might, might be something like that. And on and on it went. And you couldn't really pick the song, not yet. And then once he had them all layered in, then another sound would come in and it was on. <clears throat> then you'd go, oh, yes, that's such and such song. And then he'd start singing. And then at the end of the song, he'd tap it and it'd be deleted because he'd record it. That song would be recorded as he went. He'd delete it on the spot, gone. And as he said, that song is finished now, next song. And away we go again. So he'd lay down the beat. There was one song, I, I can't remember what it was. It was one of my favourites, but there's so many. But I just can't remember the title. And he had his guitar and he was tapping the guitar. And it had that hollowy, drummy sound because, of course, the guitar has air in the centre. And he's just tapping it. 
and then he turned the volume up on that tapping recorded little piece and looped it. It was over and over and over. And then he sped it up and it got faster and faster and faster. And it was so loud, I could feel it in my chest. And Marianne was holding a drink bottle. We could see the water bubbling. It was, oh, oh, brilliant, brilliant. I've never felt that at a concert. And that's because he's manipulating each portion of the music where if it was a pre-recorded track from a studio that's it all they've got to do is come out and sing like I say it's simple but for them it's still not but it's pre-recorded where he manipulated the sound to give us a different experience oh unbelievable and you know the other thing that surprised me is the age group there everyone in that stadium ranged from probably 35 up to, I'm going to say 80. There was all ages there. It was amazing. There was a, a young girl, she probably would have been about 13, maybe 12, sitting below us by one row. And she knew every word of that song. And she was there with her uh, mum and it looked like mum's sisters <clears throat> and grandma was there unbelievable so there was three generations of girls sitting directly in front of Mary Ann and I <coughs> excuse me the lady sitting next to me because Mary Ann was on the edge then me and then there was a couple um, they would have been probably late 60s this couple and she was grooving she oh she loved it it was yeah it was so good really good listen to me I'm just like as high as a kite and I'm filming this um it's Monday morning for me so you'll be seeing this Tuesday morning and I'm still buzzing I still I did calm down but I'm still look I just looked over and that's a piece of lace that we cut off of there see that there I'm going to put one of them in there as a flower <clears throat> yeah so Oh, it was brilliant. It went for an hour and a half. The colour, the light, the sound, feeling the sound. Wow. Mr. Ed, I tell you, you're a bit of a cool cat. Very, very cool. We were talking about <clears throat> will he be around in the years to come? You know, people like Elvis, they're epic talents that their music still resonates will ed sheeran be that in the future don't know his latest albums have gone a little bit more rap you can't understand the words he's saying it's very fast so it does worry me that <clears throat> that is getting probably a little bit too poppy i don't know i'm not a critique of music by all means, but I sort of feel like his latest album, like I was looking at my albums that I've purchased from him and I've got um, the first three and then there must have, and then Spotify came along. So I had them purchased on the Apple phone. Then Spotify comes along and it's just, you know, a subscription based thing. But the albums were when that was how you had to do it. So he was having hits on the radio and then another hit and another hit. And I'd go looking for the album and buy it. And it's just sitting in my Apple phone. <clears throat> well, I haven't had this same experience on the fourth album. Obviously, his songs been coming out. They just haven't connected with me. And I haven't gone searching. And I buy very few albums. Let me tell you, I probably... Uh, only a few artists in there. It was quite a small little collection, probably about six. <clears throat> so I don't know if those flowers are too big, but I do like them. Little, little French knots. <clears throat> Might do one more. Yeah, so I was saying to Mary Ann, I sort of haven't even really noticed the songs lately and... Um, let alone gone and bought, bought the album. So whether whether his fan base will change a little now that the songs are probably 
a little bit more rap. He's been doing a lot of songs too for other artists and he only features a little bit in it. And some of those other artists are not really my thing. I, I think I'm drawn to Ed's music because it's a little bit folk. It's sort of when I hear his song, I think of Scotland. And I've never been to Scotland, but I've got this romantic view. You know, when you've got a country you've never been to, you always have a bit of a, a romantic view of it until you go there and you go, oh, that's not what I imagined. And reality is it's, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> Scotland's definitely got that Irishy, Scottishy, jiggy sort of feel for me. And that's what his music's very much like. So I don't know whether that will change him as an artist if he starts going down a different different path. He's been doing a lot of ballads too. They get me in. I like a good ballad. I like it when I hear a story in music. I understand what they're talking about. That really that really gets me into a song. If they tell me a story. <clears throat> when they just start screaming at me or rapping or repeating a similar theme, I'm like, yeah, it's a good beat, but what are you saying to me? Nothing? All right, move along. Listen to me, the music critiquer. Got no idea, really. Music's a bit, you know, whatever moves you, I think. If you don't like it, keep looking because there's so many artists out there. So overall, 10 out of 10. Now I'm going to give him 11 and a half out of 10. Mr. Ed Sheeran, very talented kid. I'm going to stitch that in there. So um, I found the Ed Sheeran tickets. I think it was last year. So Marianne's on the hunt for some pink tickets. We've seen pink before. Um, I've seen her once and Mary Ann's seen her twice in Brisbane and she's um, coming again I think 2025 and um, she's announced two concerts for Brisbane but they sold out and poor Mary Ann she needs four tickets so I think some of her sisters are going to join us this time and she was on the site she had four all together and as she was typing in her credit card it timed out so she lost the tickets, had to go back in, and she just couldn't find another four. And within, you know, 15 minutes, they're all gone. So she's so disappointed. And all that's left now is right down the front, standing only, and then $900 a ticket, which is just crazy. Crazy. She was sitting there waiting for Ed Sheeran to come and start his concert, and she had Ticket Tech back up looking at them and they were still there, those $900 tickets. And I looked over at a phone and saw what she was up to. And I said, don't, don't do me a ticket. If you're that desperate to see pink, go for it. But no, I'm not, I'm not going to pay that much. And these, um, the family that I told you about sitting in front of us, the grandma, the mum, probably the sisters to the mum, and then this young girl, they were actually searching for pink tickets too. And they were looking at Adelaide tickets. So they were considering flying across to Adelaide to catch pink. So I don't know if that happened or not. But um, yeah, they're certainly commanding big money for these concerts now. Cost of things, I guess, are going up. Makes it expensive. I think I'd rather go and invest $900 into my sewing room. Oh, imagine what I could do with that. So, yeah, we'll see if we get to go to pink. There's quite a few artists coming. Mary Ann's kids are all going to her three daughters and their friends are all going to see Harry Styles. I believe he's next weekend. Once Ed leaves town, Harry Styles is in town. And I remember when the tickets came up, I said to Mary Ann, you know, did you want to go? Because I don't mind a little bit of Harry. He's all right. He's fun to watch. And she was like, I don't think so. I was like, okay, I won't mention that again. 
I just think he's so charismatic. He's a funny fellow, but I love how he's wearing a lot of contemporary fashion and he's just out there. I like his music. Don't mind Harry, but we're not going to see Harry. The girls all are. So after the concert, we got out okay. Oh, thousands of people. You can imagine it's all coming out of a few doors all into the one spot. So we had to find our bus drop off. And then as we got to that zone, we then had to follow the yellow dots to go to the eight mile plains. So it's just thousands of us, but the buses were flying so quick. We were on a bus in no time. We just kept walking through this snaked off area and then we were at the bus and gone. So it was pretty simple. It was pretty good. Not too crazy. So we got home to the bus depot and um, only waited a few minutes for Kev to pick us up. And um, we're driving back to their house, which is probably only about 2K from the um, area where the bus is. And Mary Ann said, oh, where are the girls, the three daughters? And um, they were out birthdays and all meeting up in town to go clubbing. And I said from the back seat, well, they didn't invite us. We're out and about tonight. We could have gone clubbing. And then Marianne and I just cracked up laughing like hell. We were buggered. <laughs> I'll tell you, they'd all gone for lunch or eat dinner somewhere and were meeting up then to go clubbing all night. I'll tell you, that was not going to be our plan. So I got back to my vehicle, said, see ya. Jumped in it, drove home. I was 20 minutes away. Walked in the door of the house, house full of people, all going, how was the concept? And I was as high as a kite, as you can imagine. I think it was about quarter to midnight. I was as high as a kite. I could still feel the beating in my chest from his music. And so I'd re I had recorded a couple of the... Um, songs on my phone so I popped them onto the TV so they all watched it and yeah it was great I think we finally all went to bed at one in the morning and I still couldn't get to sleep I was just buzzing I tell you what you couldn't do that every night or every weekend so I laid there to probably 3 a.m feeling the beat so um that was my Ed Sheeran experience. And if that little red-headed chap comes back again, I'm so there. He is awesome. Awesome. All the way to Mary Ann's. Uh, I had his albums playing in the car at the top of the volume. So I was really getting in the mood. And then all the way home, I had him playing. It was I was bopping away like a goose. I tell you what. The things you do. It was good, but you don't often do those types of things. You sort of get into your routine and you see these concerts come and go and you think, oh, I should have. I think Elton John's been here recently. I was chatting to the neighbour and they went to Elton John. I thought, yeah, I remember seeing that, but oh, I thought, no, nah, I couldn't be bothered. But we made an effort for young Harry. So if you're wondering what the hang I'm stitching here, that pot there, I did three daisy, lazy daisy stitches. This little pot directly below, I'm doing some little um, knots again. Just three, three twists around the needle. So I thought we'd put a bit of sparkle in there. I didn't explain what I was doing, I was yabbering on. That little piece of lace I stitched, I'm thinking of finding a pearl actually. I'm putting it in the center of it, but we'll get this, we'll get these little knots in. How are we going for time? Oh, heaps of time. It's actually getting quite warm in my room. Must be a storm building again, that humidity. Oh gosh, it's been shocking. You're watching this Tuesday morning. I believe the humidity is with us in Brisbane till Wednesday. And then there's a change coming through. <clears throat> a little bit over summer, might I just say. Just 
just going to end this off. Oh, it's shocking stuff to use. I know when I first tried using this thread, it's a DMC product, E677, and it's stranded cotton, but it's um, metallic thread. When I first bought it and first tried it, I was like, oh, goodness, that is horrid. But I persisted, and the result that it gives you is beautiful but it is a shocker to use. I'm gonna to need to jump up and open my craft room door to let some fresh air in, won't be a second. <clears throat> Just finding it getting a little stuffy and I'm looking out my window to the uh, right of me and it's got really dark and I think it's only like 11 a.m. in the morning. So suddenly the humidity is lifted. Now, I want to put something in the center. I wonder if that's too big. Let's get needle and thread happening. I did have one threaded. I need a beading needle. Fine little guy, yep. Thread this up and I'm going to find a bead. That can go in the center of this little piece of lace. So I think that's my Ed story. I don't think it was anything else exciting that happened. That was enough. I shall let you know if we get pink tickets, but I'm thinking. I have a feeling they'll announce a third concert. There's only two so far. And you know how they tend to, they'll announce three and then you think you've missed out and then suddenly there's a third. It's like they want to make sure that they sell out at least the two to cover costs or I, I don't know what their theory is, but I reckon we're in with a chance. That bead, I think, what if I stand it up? If I keep it stood up, it's nearly a bit big. Um, I'm going to take it off. I feel like it's a bit big. It's a bit overpowering. I've lost the little bit of lace edge. Let's have another look in that bucket of beads there. Maybe drop down a size. Don't ask me what size the beads are. I've got no idea. I'm not a beading <clears throat> person like a jewellery maker, so... I would probably know my sizes really well. Some of those would be good. I might try this little gold guy. He's a, a size down, but I'm not 100% sure. Just pick one of them up. Uh, just not as impressive. I might try three of them in a little cluster. That might be better. Yeah, that's better. It's gone quite lineal, so that's okay. That still allows then the lace to be seen. So I'm happy with that. So that's all of them that side. Now I'm just going to scoot over to this side. We've got quite a wide pot here. So I wonder if I can use some of these little metal sequin. Where did they go? Some of those, these guys, they're already in the shape of a flower. My pot is quite long. So I'm thinking, let's just place him. Yeah, that'll work. Now we could get really tricky and put a little bead in the center. Instead of stitching over the piece itself a couple times, we use the bead in the center to secure 
him down. So I've just threaded that on and now I'm going to go in. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cute. Get another one next to it on. At least I've got some floral like piece on there, not just stitches making it look like a floral. Pick up the little bead, he'll slide in and then secure it. Awesome. Okay, I must record next the review of those books of um, Jennifer's. They're sitting here on my desk and um, I filmed that one episode that you watched Saturday and then Sunday was just a write-off. There's just too much going on and I was having too much fun and I was like, oh, I didn't, I, like I seriously didn't even think about the room, my craft room. I was just yabbering all day and you, you know what I'm like. Wherever there's a crowd, that's me. So the two books are sitting exactly where I left them after I gave you a sneaky look at them. So what I might do at the end of this video is I'm going to record a flip through of those. So that'll be some point through the week. I may even do it Wednesday for you, seeing it's going to be the next video in my phone, on my iPad. So you're seeing this one Tuesday, the books will be tomorrow for you, Wednesday. And then um, I will pick up one of the other pieces, whether I go back to Splash of Colour and we work on those hanging baskets. I think that's all I need. Concentrate on what I'm doing here. Just going to do those four Happy with that. Knock that off. So we've got how many pots left in our little house? It's not exactly riveting viewing for you guys, but it's all tasks to be done. We've got uh, another little ring of lace. So I might put in that just some little pearly beads. Mix it up a little bit. Then we've got one more pot. I'm thinking I might do some more French knots in because they're really pretty. Or maybe I do some Lazy Daisy. I'll get that white thread again because the white thread's held its own on that background. Without being too Let's put my thread. Goodness me. Come on, there we go. So let's pick up three little beads. Ah, oh, now the thread's on the other side. The needle's down underneath. I've put the beads on, you goose. I was just thinking to, um, there's a bit of an update on Susanna's um, from Vintage Blend Studio. Her retreat that she'd planned for later in the year has had to be postponed due to some issues with the venue and double booking and oh, just, you know, typical circus. You can't organise nothing these days without something going wrong. So she's pivoted very quickly to turn the entire thing into a virtual class. So that means more kits are actually now have been released for sale. So I believe there's only 13 left, maybe 12. There's a link in her video that she released. I don't like those beads. I can't see them. No. Goodness me. Let's pull them out. I'll cut them. So, yeah, so now you can all get access to it. So it'll be a case of you purchase the kit. I think the kit was... No, I'm not going to quote it in case I get it wrong. I don't want to 
cause any issues for Susanna. Um, you get the kit and in that you get a vintage tablecloth and um, some vintage, um, what do they call them? English paper piece together hexagons. And that's the centerpiece and then some additional fabrics to create the design around the tablecloth. You'll know what I mean when you have a look at it all, if that's something that interests you. And then Susanna will give you uh, an email with some um, videos. It's either five or six. Gee, I'm hopeless. Sorry, Susanna. Five or six videos that show you step by step uh, exactly what to do with your kit when you arrive at. So you can do it at your leisure. You'll have the videos forever. And um, yeah, and it's they'll be more detailed too. It's it's tricky when we YouTube stuff um, and we want to get quite detailed. Often, you know, well, probably not so much me, but you work you work the piece in segments so that it's not super boring for you all. Probably not so much me because I just turn the camera on and you're sitting here with me as I go. So some videos we do a lot because it's, you know, process of developing a concept. Other videos like this one, we're just stitching and chatting and working our way through the tasks needed for the piece. So Susanna's videos that she will send you will be very much more detailed so that you've got, you know, exactly what to do to complete your project. So there's some beautiful tablecloths in there, guys. You know, at the end of the day, just the tablecloths are just stunning. There's a couple there that caught my eye and I'm like, oh, really, really pretty. Just to have them in your collection and then to be able to embellish them with the fabrics that Susanna gives you and the tutorials, they'd just be beautiful pieces. And I guess it gives you ideas too, because you've probably all got tablecloths hanging around that you've inherited or picked up over the years. Well, it gives you a bit of an idea of, you know, what you could do with them. Pull them out and put your creative element into them. I'm going to, where's my white thread? I'm going to stitch some white lazy daisies, I think. So yeah, if you're interested, pop over to Vintage Blend Studio and you'll find a link to her shop. She's got a website and on there are the kits. So you can purchase and, you know, do your own thing at your leisure and it's now available to everyone around the world. I'm sure you guys in America find the same thing. It's you're such a big country like us and it's just so hard to, you know, pick up and travel and get four days to do something and to have the world of the internet allowing us to join into projects that are on the other side of the planet is just amazing. Just amazing. Hmm. I think back to when they announced the internet. And I remember watching a story on 60 Minutes about this internet. It was created by these doctors as a form of communication within a medical campus. And it worked so well that they thought if everyone could upload information to these websites and it be hosted on the internet, the world might find it handy. And of course, well, it took off, didn't it? And, you know, I watched that story on 60 Minutes. It's Australian news story channel here. And I said to Gary at the time, I said, that's not going to take off. No one is going to want to go to their computer, which we'd barely all got computers in our homes, which were not real good, let's be honest. No one's going to walk over to their desk and sit there and search stuff on the internet you know what's it's not going to take off this won't work technology inept human that i am well was i wrong <laughs> lucky i'm not inventing anything 
for the good of humanity. Probably wouldn't really happen. There we go. I've just done a layer of lazy daisy stitches. I did three at the base and then I popped two in here and one on top. That uh, sort of looks like a plant. <laughs> now I'm happy with that. So what I might do, we've only got a few minutes left, is I'm going to stitch in the piece that I want to use up here. I just want that path to be finished somewhat. So I'm going to invisible stitch this little guy down and I'm happy that that little issue is finished and I can then start thinking about putting in some rocks and foliage around the base of the greenhouse. I wonder what other little implements we should have around our greenhouse. We could probably lean a shovel up somewhere, couldn't we? Don't know. Have to have a think about it. Got so many ideas for that French garden. But I just want to get these little ones done. Thank goodness we have two weeks between projects. Otherwise... My head would explode with, you'd get more of an edited photo, um, video, I think. I'd have to do bits, film, cut, paste, film, cut, paste. Is that even up the right way? Yeah, it is. I don't have time for film, cut, paste. So I just turn it on. I was doing a little bit of that at the beginning. Sometimes it's, you know, you have to because you want to move a project along. Otherwise, you guys would be sitting for hours waiting to get to the finale. But this particular little one, I can... It's amazing what you do achieve in an hour. If you can just get an hour a day to sit and stitch, that's all you need. Just incredible what you can achieve once you get your idea into your mind and then you start stitching you'll then come up with other ideas you don't have to solve the whole whole pattern or the whole design prior to starting you just get started even if it's only one little thing you like yes I want to do this just do it and you'll find that while you're stitching your eyes will be looking up somewhere else and going oh I could do that I could do this like I just glanced up at those buttons. I haven't brought those buttons into this design since way back up here, which was the garden path. So if I add more garden path to this piece, maybe I could bring some buttons in around the actual little greenhouse. So... I might, um, might do that. So there'll be another video for this prompt for this piece and it'll probably pop up next week because I want to get into those other ones too. So stay tuned and it'll be all about the path. Do we add it? Add some pebbles. The manufacturer of this flower, if you look in there, there's a little bit of wadding. So they've used that to make it puffy and then they've stitched over that wadding to make that a 3d flower we could do that easily makes it puffy so I'm just going to whiz around this edge here I can get the iron then and get rid of all my red lines on my little greenhouse so then I can sort of have a look at it and go, well, what else can I add? Do I need some more plants? Do I need to add some tools? Something will come to mind, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Ow. Good on you. 
just as we're finishing up, a nice good jab of a needle. Lovely. Oh, I must say a, a hello to Kathleen. Kathleen is the lovely lady I met when I dropped off all of the um, fur. Well, not all of the fur. I took the crazy colours out because Kathleen mentioned she's part of the CWA in my hometown, well, next to my hometown in Mergen, and that they do up kits and all sorts of projects to raise money for the CWA, uh, Country Women's Association. And that the yarn would be other uh, yarn, the fur that I inherited from a lady's craft room through a friend of a friend of a friend, all this fur turned up. Previous video, I spun the camera over to my wall and there was a mountain of it to at least my hip. So all the crazy colours went to a thrift store down the road. And um, I went back a few days later and it was all packaged up beautifully and all out for sale. So there was reds and purples and pinks and crazy stuff. But for Kathleen, she got all of the classic teddy colours. So everything from cream through to chocolate and also all of the patterns. I did keep a couple for myself, but there were so many. I thought, don't do it, Corinne. You got enough stuff. But I did keep uh, a couple of the bear patterns. They were literally the ones that fell out. When I picked up a, a big folder and there's like four or five folders, a pattern would fall out. That's the one I kept. And I picked up another one, another one would fall out. They were the ones. So they just fell out at me. So, um, yeah, I ducked up to my dad to visit and I quickly went to the next town and... Um, caught up with Kathleen and gave her the big big bags of this fur and the patterns so yeah it was lovely I didn't have a lot of time to stay and chat to Kathleen because I had my dad and my husband in the car and they were like tapping their toes going don't even think about it girl because they could see Kathleen was a kindred spirit with uh, her collection of craft and oh we needed more time together, didn't we, Kathleen? So she sent me a little message later to say, next time you're up when we have time, we'll meet at a bakery that's in my hometown and I think it'll be a cup of tea and a piece of cake and we'll have a chat because I think uh, we're very similar, just like all you guys watching right now. I think that's it. If I pick up the needle, I'm going to get down another rabbit hole and that next rabbit hole is to do a little bit of work in here. I'm seriously thinking of putting a, a tool here or something. I don't know. And this path, don't tell me I lost it again. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I need to make a decision about this little piece. That's all we got. So do I break it down in half so I get another morsel? Do I just pull it down a bit further? So it's just there. I think I might do that. I don't know. Do we wait for the next prompt? Because by the time I put all these stones in and build the base around the little hut, that's that piece of tulle too. I'm going to wait for the next prompt because I'd hate to put it in and there's something easy to go in here because there's a nice blank space and maybe that can come down further on the piece. Let me just zoom out so you know what the hang I'm talking about. See, we've only really got that distance left. So a good question is where does this go? So I'm gonna put it back into the embroidery box and I will remember where it is now because I've said that out aloud. I'm going to get this little piece of tulle that came off of that flower. And I'm just going to pin it there. So next time we're together, it is in behind whatever we do. Okay, beautiful. One little glass house, how sweet. All right, guys, look after yourselves. I'm now going to switch off the camera and I'm going to do... A book review on these two and you'll see that the next video so Wednesday all right gonna fly I'll see you all later enjoy your day bye for now